So guys, how you doing? Keith here with Heart of Football. Uh, tonight's vlog basically will come from Tallis Stadium tonight where the Irish under-21 side will take on the Armenian under-21 side. Um, the Irish won their first game against Luxembourg 3-0 so they're hoping to make it two wins out two tonight. Uh, should be a good game. Some very exciting talent in this Irish squad. Uh, you've got Ida from Norwich City who scored two goals against Luxembourg but he's also played the Carabao Cup for Norwich City. Uh, Troy Parrish, you know, looks like he'll be the great white hope a little bit. He's only 17. He's in the Tottenham Champions League squad for this season. He should be playing tonight. Exciting to see who goes. Obafeni, Michael Obafeni, who's played for Southampton, we know about. Um, I'd imagine he'll start tonight as well. Uh, there's a couple others there as well. Uh, Aaron Connolly um, is another one. And uh, Malumpy, although we'll see if he plays or not, he's from West Brom as well, and he's on loan at Millwall. So um, it's a game I'm personally really looking forward to because, um, as I said, there's a lot of exciting players in this Irish squad, particularly when it comes to attacking. Um, Stephen Kenny, of course, is the manager um, and will be the next senior manager once Mick McCarthy's contract is up. So it'll be interesting to see um how he goes about it he likes to get the ball in the deck and pass the ball around um which is something that's a little bit alien to ireland in general i know mccarthy kind of plays it a bit but um it's a little bit different so we'll see how that goes tonight um the other big thing about it is a lot of these young players coming through are going to have experience of working with kenny before you know maybe four or five of them will jump onto the seniors who knows how many and they'll have an idea how Stephen works and it's an extra incentive to impress as well, I think. So, um, you know, they're in a group with, you know, Iceland, Italy and Sweden, along with Armenia and Luxembourg. So this, you'd probably say tonight is a must win in that sense of Sweden away. I think it's Wednesday night as well, which is obviously a difficult one. So they need to be probably winning tonight. Um, we'll see how they go and we'll see how the lineup is later on when I get to the Tala Stadium. Um, I'll give you a brief word, especially for uh, our foreign watch watchers. Um, brief word, a glimpse on the t on Tallis Stadium itself when we get there. And um, lads, don't forget to subscribe, like and subscribe if you can, and press your bo bell notification button as well. That kind of keeps you up with all the updates. And um, everyone that's subscribed so far, I just want to say we appreciate it. Thanks very much. And. Uh, as we said before, this is unpolished, it's raw, and that's the idea. We want to get to the heart of things. We want to give honest opinions, um, and we don't really want to be scripted, so to speak. So, um, yeah, so um, I'll see you all again in another while when I get to Tallis Stadium. Good luck. So, guys, I arrived here at Tallis Stadium, and um, there's the pitch behind me, the ground itself. Uh, capacity here is 8,000, very good facilities. It's only been built 10 years ago. Uh, Robbie Keane heads from Tala, by the way, Ireland's top scorer of all time. And um, yeah, an hour before kickoff, uh, sample some of the atmosphere, get some of the facilities in and that kind of thing. Um, Shamrock Rovers play here. This is their home ground, the most successful side in Irish football. So we'll head on in. So our lads, just going to give you a view of the pitch behind me here. It's a good view, isn't it? Quick idea of the facilities, lads. You can see it's very, um, you know, look at that. It's uh, for an Irish league ground. This is actually excellent, to be fair. Um, very plush. Billy.
Shamrock Rover squad there. Bit of a poster on the wall, pretty cool. Give me an idea of the facilities, and not so much words, lads. Sorry, Billy. Cool guys. Irish players warming up there, lads. Just got a burger and chips. Armenian players warming up now, lads.
Troy Paris put Ireland ahead, lads. Number 10, Troy Paris. So, lads, right, it's half time here. Uh, that's Pavarotti in the background. I hope you can hear me for God's sake. Um, so, Republic of Ireland won, Armenia nil. Troy Paris scored in around the 30th minute. Uh, first 10 or 15 minutes, very, very tight. Uh, although it was all Ireland, they played. Played a lot of pace. Uh, Malumfi started to control things in midfield. I said Malumfi was uh, earlier on. I think I said he was alone with um, Millwall from West Brom and Brighton. is the club. His club. Uh, he started to control things in midfield. It was good chemistry in the right between Gavin Kenny and uh, O'Connor of Celtic. Um, on the left, Aaron Connolly playing like Damien Duff, showing great close control, great skill, great crosses. I think he set up the goal for Parrot as well. Uh, Ireland created a lot of chances after the 15 minutes, between the 15 and 25th they created about 5 or 6 chances as well and uh, could have had a few more goals to be honest but um, yeah it's a good half, keeping the ball down, passing it well, um, controlling the midfield, eventually picking up the pace and getting the ball wide left and right. Um, could see a bit more from Ida up front but Parrish playing well off and Connolly's probably the pick in the bunch in the second half, he, or in the first half, he's been really, really good. He's been excellent, Con Aaron Connolly on the left. So, 1 0 to Ireland. Uh, if they can keep up the pace, you can see another few goals in the second half. Right, just coming out of the game now, lads. The finished Republic of Ireland won Armenia nil. Um, a game Ireland dominated, to be fair. It was probably comfortable 1 0. Uh, Armenia had a couple of little chances, but there were kind of soft efforts straight down the keeper's throat. Ireland dominated possession, very comfortable in football. Um, <clears throat> I gave it a half time report in the second half. Uh, Troy Parrish could have had a hat trick actually after good work from Ida. Parrish hit the post. Paris at the post and should have scored really to make it 2-0. Another chance as well where he could have scored. Um, but, you know, he's 17, this was his debut and he done very well overall. He could have had a hat-trick, probably should have had two. Ultimately, he got the winner, so you have to look at it in those terms. Um, yeah, Ireland in the second half, um, I don't think they created as many good opportunities. Connolly looks sharp. Um, Aaron Connolly on the wing as, again um, Malumfi did control the game in the second half again in fact he was awarded the man of the match by the announcer um, 3,000 people 800 I think uh, turned up for the match it was quite good considering Ireland of the game in the seniors last night as well so um, the performance was very good apart from the fact they didn't score more goals if you know what I mean they, they were the better side they dominated um, guy let me go here just trying to get out of the car park. Thought I'd take advantage from actually waiting in the car and, and do this. So, um, yeah, so onwards and upwards for the under 21s. Two wins in a row, two clean sheets. Um, both centre backs look very comfortable as well, I have to say. Uh, very co When I say comfortable, very good on the ball and that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, I mean, 
we'll take that and we'll see what happens on Tuesday against Sweden on Tuesday against Sweden right better you get a sense lads as well that uh, you know Stephen Kenny is priming these guys into the style of play that he wants from the seniors in a couple of years I mean obviously and in general um, you're going to have a case where you are developing players for your senior squad but the fact as I said on at the top of the video that Kenny's going to be the manager now in a couple of years uh, or whenever Mick McCarthy's contract is up basically um, after the Euros whenever that is um, you now Kenny you know he's encouraging football he's uh, you know Ireland play from the back a lot as well they will play long if they need to they mix it up they won't exaggerate by passing the ball around but um, it's a good style of football and they've got kind of wingers as well, the kind of uh, old fashioned wingers. Connolly reminded me very much of Damien Duff um, in style, the way he played. So, um, look, it was uh, it was enjoyable, definitely it was enjoyable. And um, it'll be interesting to see going forward now if they can, um, maybe they took their foot off the gas a little bit in the second half. Very, very comfortable, still could have had more goals. But with Sweden and mine on Tuesday away, which is going to be a big game for them, they'll need be looking to get at least a point from that. Uh, no reason why they can't go there and win, in my view. So, um, yeah, I mean, the Tallah Stadium itself, you could see it by the facilities, uh, very, very good, very, very niche, very tidy, new, uh, modernised, you know, it's a modern stadium. Um, compared to the other stadium, club stadiums in Ireland, it's on another level to be honest um, I'm sure we'll be, we'll be there again for a league game as well if they, um, a League of Ireland game um, you know so um, yeah so that's it lads um, that's the match day experience over from Tala Stadium and you know if you enjoy the content uh, please like and subscribe and click your bell notification button and uh, it keeps you keeps in touch with the updates and updated videos and all sorts um, but you know we'll um, you know it's raw it's unpolished um, but that's the idea as well um, we want to get a sense of the occasion in a human fashion so to speak all right guys cheers and see you later good luck